We are very confident that by the year 2050, with present trends in population growth and economic development in the world, we're going to have a world with about 9.2 billion people, which is 2.2 billion more people than today. And they'll be much wealthier than today on average because of economic development, particularly in the world's most populous countries, countries like China, India, um, Nigeria, Indonesia. These countries have economic de growth rates of four, five, even 10% per year. And as people are, live in countries that are developing, they get wealthier. So most of the world's population their incomes are going to more than double between now and 2050. And in doing so, they require more food because they, they're wealthy enough to purchase more meat and livestock products and a diverse diet, which means they eat higher up the food chain. And these things require um, uh, more land, more water. Now, water productivity is the preferred metric for looking at water use efficiency and conservation in agriculture because the easiest way to save water in agriculture it would be not to irrigate simply reduce water use by reducing the number of irrigated acres but in a sense long term that's not an answer because the world needs more food we're limited with land and water and irrigated agriculture contributes 40% of the human food supply. So the answer has to be producing more food with less water. And here in the US, one of our major production areas, the Great Plains, where we grow lots of irrigated corn, uh, irrigated wheat, crops such as sugar, beet, alfalfa, um, uh, dry beans, all with irrigation. Because there isn't enough rainfall for highly productive agriculture. Uh, here too, our water tables are dropping in many areas and uh, there's concern about the long-term viability of the aquifer. So the point is, the big picture, the challenge of continuing to increase food production in a second green revolution that must once again double food supply in about 40 years, about the same magnitude of challenge that faced the first green revolution, except this time we won't have the luxury of expanding irrigated agriculture. We're going to have to do it with existing irrigated area and with less water per unit uh, of area. And yet we have to continue producing higher and higher yields. So that's what's different. That's the scientific challenge. And quite frankly, we have not been asked to do that before. So we're facing a whole brave new era for very talented um, scientists uh, to take the mantle of this challenge.